What's up guys, it's econ time now and in the last class we spoke about price elasticity of demand. Now we're going to talk about price elasticity of supply which is fairly the same concept, alright? But in demand we're talking about the consumer, with supply we talk more about the producer, the quantity supplied aspect of everything. So firstly, the responsiveness of quantity supplied due to a change in price is the elasticity of supply. But again, what does that mean? That means that by what extent is the quantity supplied changing from the producer as price changes. Now remember that the prices in the, uh, are set in the market through equilibrium, that is the price mechanism sets the prices for both the producer and the consumer. So to what extent does the supply go up or down, all right, because of a change in price or by what proportion or by what rate? That rate or that proportion is calculated by finding the percentage change in quantity supply divided by the percentage change in price. Now again, I reminded you in the last class, Remember that this triangle over here means delta. So again, percentage delta or percentage change in quantity supply divided by percentage change in price. This will always be positive. Price elasticity of demand would always be negative because of the law of demand. The demand is a downward sloping curve, which means that as prices go up, the quantity demanded goes down. Over here, it's an upward sloping curve. So as prices go up, the producer is willing and able to make more. All right, now again, I'm repeating this concept again. Well, not a concept, it's more of a rule of thumb. Whenever you calculate price elasticity of anything, quantity over the price, all right? Queen over all else, whatever it is. Always remember this, queen over all else, all right? Now, how do you show that there's something known as price elastic supply or price inelastic supply? Now, firstly, price elastic supply is that due to a small change in the price, quantity supplied is changing by a larger percentage, all right, or by a larger rate. That is shown over here in the first diagram, which is a slightly flatter supply curve. Over here, PES is going to be greater than one. Throw in some numbers over here, you'll easily be able to see that yes, the price elastic supply is indeed greater than one. Over here, you can see that this space, this change in the quantity is much bigger than the change in the price. Now, what is price inelasticity of supply? That is when prices uh, that due to a large, that you know, prices rise, are, the price rise is huge, but the quantity supplied is not changing by very much. All right, again, I'm repeating that, I ate up my words a little bit. Price change might be huge, but the quantity supplied might not change by much. It also doesn't have to be massive, but it can be a smaller rate. But again, the proportionate change in the quantity supplied won't also be very much. And that's going to be a relatively more steeper curve. Again, it's still upward sloping, but that change will be that PES, price elasticity supply, will be less than one. Take a screenshot of this, and we're going to touch three more kinds of price elasticity of supplies. Price uh, perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic, and unitarily elastic. All right, now the three different variations of price elasticity supply, well, the three further variations. Now again, just like in demand, uh, where perfectly inelastic or elastic or unitary were basically opposite ends of the spectrum and our reference points, they don't really exist. The same is over here in supply. Now, if supply is perfectly inelastic, that means that no matter how high prices might go, the producer cannot make more of something, so quantity supplied will not shift. That means the PES is going to be zero. Over here, if, the if, uh, if supply is perfectly elastic, that means that regardless of uh, whatever quantity, at that same price, the, the price will stay fixed. That means that the consumer, sorry, the producer can quickly add more if they need, if they need, or they can quickly reduce the supply if they need. So adding supply is no issue at that current price. And therefore, supply PES will be infinity. Now, unitary price elasticity of supply will be that with the proportionate change in price, the exact uh, change in quantity supplied is occurring. That's why I've made two equal to signs over here or 11s or whatever you want to call them. Basically, that's showing that the distance is the same. The change in price will be equal to the change in quantity supplied. But why might this happen? Why might some be elastic? Why might some supplies be elastic and some be inelastic? Now, the determinants of that might be firstly spare capacity. To what extent uh, does is the is the producer able to make more of something in a certain amount of time? All right, now two different variables, but let's talk about spare capacity first. Basically, what spare capacity means that does the producer have the ability to up quantity supplied if needed at that very instant? Do they have enough raw materials kept to uh, to make something quickly? Do they have um, enough machines to make something very quickly, and so on and so forth? 
The next is the level of inventory or the level of stock. To what extent does the supplier actually have something ready made and kept in inventory on the side? So like for example, Kokomo, does the spare capacity, does the, does the producer have enough wheat in the barrels kept ready to make Kokomo if need be? And do they have enough Kokomo ready made to actually throw it into the market? Number of producers, how many producers are there who make Kokomo? If there's only one producer making Kokomo, which there actually is, I think it's Colson, but if there's only one producer making Kokomo, then um, it's not? Who, who makes Kokomo? Bisconi makes Kokomo. Okay, well, my childhood is ruined now. But uh, if Bisconi is only making Kokomo, then that means that quality supply cannot increase immediately unless they have spare capacity or inventory. If, say, Bisconi along with Colson and along with Asad Hashmili and Fezan Hemani were making Kokomo, then there'd be no issue in the elasticity of supply. Now, time is also variable because it takes time to make something, and that the best example of that is agriculture. Do uh, do the farmers have enough time to actually grow a pile of a, a pile of rice in days? No, they don't because it takes months to actually grow rice. And the final is faster substitution. To what extent can labor be substituted for, for capital and to what extent can capital be substituted for labor? If that transition can happen very swiftly and very quickly, then there should be no issue in actually fulfilling supply. I hope this made sense. Now again, this was relatively shorter than the last lesson because the concepts of PED apply to the concepts of PES. All right. So again, um, if you have questions, just reach out to us. These concepts need to be solid. All right. Till then, till the next lesson, take care. Bye-bye.